Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, The Betrayal. When an incompetent co-worker turns against me and teams up with a dangerous psychopath. The second story, the unpaid bill, the manager's revenge, and the unexpected chaos. The third story, the boss wants me to do more work but won't pay me for it. I say no and they face the consequences. The first story is, the story of when my incompetent coworker turned on me and sided with a criminally dangerous psychopath. So I've worked the front desk at this hotel for a few years now that honestly has one of the most inconsistent and terrible managements anyone's ever seen. But I've been there for so many years and become so used to the hotel's system that I can deal with it better than most and coast along. However, this means that the hotel has a high turnover of employees and I get to work with a steady stream of cartoon characters who are willing to put up with the odd hours and odder management. One such character, we'll call him Turtle, cause he's a turtle headed looking F, was working the night shift with me. Turtle is extremely incompetent even as a 40 plus year old man who was assigned to a reasonably simple job as a night auditor. A position in which I, a 24 year old at the time, was still handling the main responsibilities of processing reports and such until he could stand on his own. However, he seemed adamant to not want to learn. I'd hear from my other coworkers a myriad of complaints about Turtle. He doesn't pay attention to the reports he's assigned and thus never learns. He gives guests the wrong information and is offended when he's corrected in front of the guest by his coworkers. He's lazy and leaves the desk without warning, etc. So I tell him about the issues I've heard he's having and have a direct and straightforward relationship with him, clearly establishing that I want him to do well and that he needs to address these issues if he wants to stay. This does not go over well with Turtle. He decides that I'm public enemy number one and starts acting extremely cold with me. All right, dude, it's your own grave. I was just trying to stop you from digging it faster. On the night the horror went down, he had checked a guest out of the hotel and given their deposit in cash back. He admitted to me later that he gave too much cash out for the deposit and hadn't opened the system to check the bill to see if it was the standard deposit amount to return or anything else. I said, dude, that's your fault. You should have checked how much you were supposed to charge the guest and return for their deposit. Sorry, but that's your problem. A few minutes later, he remarks to me that the guest forgot his wallet at the desk so he had the great idea to simply take out the difference from the guest's wallet and put it back in his till. I asked him if he was insane and in what world taking money out of someone's wallet without their consent, especially for us as employees, was a good idea. I told him to give me the wallet and instructed him not to touch his till for the rest of the night. I told him directly that I would take responsibility, as I'm one of only three senior people at the desk, for removing him from his till and I would have to talk to the front desk manager before I'd be comfortable with him taking the till again. Oh boy, that made him sour. So now I'm finishing the pre-audit reports and starting the audit alone because the man-child is pouting in the corner when a young guy comes in and asks for a room. I said for sure we have rooms available. Please just have a seat and I'll be able to help him in five to 10 minutes. Now this person sat down, but they wouldn't stop glaring at me. I'm wondering why. I said I was going to check in. What's wrong? He gets up and goes up to Turtle and tells him to check him in. Turtle says sorry, this guy says I'm not allowed to touch the till tonight. Why Turtle felt it was important for this guy to know that, I'll never know. Now I'm trying to make it clear that I'm offering this guest a room, but he has to wait with the system being temporarily down for the audit and me essentially working alone. He starts getting aggressively loud and angry and glaring at me, inching closer towards me until I've had enough. You know what, sir? You're making me uncomfortable. I don't feel safe checking you in. Please leave. Young man doesn't budge. Now this is when Turtle gets up and does the heel turn of the century, turns into a villain. He says, hold on man, the property manager lives here and I'm gonna call him to help you because I know this guy, talking about me, and he's a huge racist. He's never treated people of color right, I'll get you a room, and then starts glaring at me. I wish I could put into words the fury that was blinding me at that moment, but I couldn't focus on that because this stranger, to both of us mind you, got excited that he had unexpected backup, and definitely wasn't gonna leave and in fact started mock shooting at me, standing next to Turtle's side of the desk and running his finger across his neck at me, from next to Turtle. But Turtle didn't see anything he said. The idiot couldn't reach the property manager's cell phone, so I called his room myself and said, dude, I'm done. Come down if you want to, but I'm ghost. Adios. He tells me groggily over the phone to just stay calm and that he's coming down. 
For context, this is around 3 to 3.30 in the morning. So he comes down and opens the back office and has me sit there and tell him in detail what led to all this. He then interviews Turtle. Stories match up perfectly. Manager has had some experience dealing with psychos, so he sends Turtle away on an errand and has me play along like I'm checking in the young man until the cops show up. Mind you, this is Toronto at 3.30 a.m. on a Saturday, so they show up close to an hour, and about a thousand threats and gloats from the guy to me later, and take him away. But not before telling us this guy was criminally insane, and that Turtle had put me in danger by turning his ire on me instead of de-escalating the situation. You know, like a normal co-worker would have? When Turtle came back, I point blank said I'm never working with this guy again as of right now, and I don't want to see his face at the desk. Manager says that's valid and asks Turtle to walk out and station himself somewhere else until morning. Turtle is leaving the desk, completely oblivious to everything he just put me through, and says, you see the attitude I have to deal with from this guy? I snapped. I had spent the last hour shaking in the back room of the front desk and trying to keep my anxiety attack at bay, and the psycho guessed at bay until the cops showed up and I couldn't take it anymore. I called him every name in the book to his face and slammed the door to the front desk. It's only waist high behind him. I waited three hours after my shift ended to speak to the front desk manager and the property manager to see what to do about all this. And this is where the goofy management comes in. They had to find an excuse not to fire this guy because it's so hard to find anyone willing to work here, so they blamed me for provoking the incident by not dropping the audit and checking him in immediately. Once their excuses were done, I made it clear I was never going to see his face at the hotel again, so don't ever book me with him again. Surprise, surprise, he got fired less than a week later for no showing shifts. His excuse? Working the night shift was affecting his bedroom life with his wife and that was inexcusable. Thankfully, I never did have to see his face again, and I came to terms with how SH my management is and resolved to work as hard at school as possible to make sure I got myself as far away from this life as possible. Waiting on my final grade now to become a university graduate and start college in the fall, before which I fully plan to hand in my resignation and clean my hands of this place forever. The second story is... Wildest first table of the day encounter. I work at an Applebee's in a very busy location. I've almost been there for a year now and it's my first serving job. Saturdays are by far the worst days ever, of course. You get constantly double sat. Hosts are idiots and other time managers demand them to sit anyone if there's an open table. They don't care what quality of service we can give. Cups and utensils barely get cleaned thanks to forgetful and lazy bussers, so we're scrambling to find plastic utensils and to-go cups, both of which we're not allowed to give out but do anyways under the manager's noses when we have to. This Saturday in particular started off with a bang. My first table of the day is a five top. A dude, his girlfriend, and three kids definitely all below ten. He first starts off by telling me he used to work there and is wondering if he can get a discount. I go to ask my manager. For this case, let's call her Joy. I tell Joy his name and immediately she responds with, Hell no, he ain't getting SH. I'm guessing she wasn't a huge fan of him when he was there. I go back and tell him we can only give discounts to former employees and he's okay with this. Everything is going smoothly. We strike up a conversation. The man orders bone-in buffalo wings. Then when I pass by three minutes later, he changes his mind to flaming hot Cheeto wings instead. I already sent the buffalo wings in, so I go into the kitchen to let the kitchen manager know of the change, and he says all right. When the family is finished eating, they request their bill, to which I give them. The bill is $117, and he gives me $128 and tells me to keep the change. As I pass back around, he tells me I charged him for the buffalo wings that he canceled, which I apologize for and immediately go to fix. I return with his money back and the corrected bill. Total is $101, so that he can adjust how much he wants to tip me, because I doubted his intentions were to tip me $27. He gets up without a word after I gave him the new bill and the money and walks for the door. I'm thinking, okay, maybe he left it on the table and I didn't see? So I stick around the area and the girlfriend is still there with one of the kids, so I'm thinking she's going to pay the bill. Then she gets up and starts walking for the door and I ask her, is he going to pay the bill? She replies with, I think he's going to pay up front and I tell her that it doesn't work like that here and she has to pay with me. By the time I finished, she had a phone to her ear, likely pretending to be on a call so she can ignore me and walk out. I get to the front where they both are and ask them if they're going to pay and they still ignore me. Thankfully, my manager Joy was there. She's tall and has a no BS attitude. She's known to chase customers down. <laughs> she looked at me with a smile of anticipation on her face and says, do you need me? And I said, yeah, they didn't pay their bill. And she instantly springs up and confronts them outside. I explained to her in front of them that I gave him the money with the corrected bill back and he walked out, ignoring me and he said, well, isn't that kind of stupid? I told you to take whatever you charge me. He did not. Nah, I don't think I'm going to pay, and tells his kids to hurry up and go to the car. 
the lady continues playing dumb. My manager Joy and one of the hostesses ran inside to get her car keys and prepared to chase them down. After that happened it's silent for a while, work resumes as normal. About 20 minutes later she comes back inside yelling claiming she punched the man and the woman in the face and that they call the cops and that I may need to give a statement. The kitchen and other staff are shocked at what's happening and are looking at me like, oh that's your table? The cops came in and thankfully didn't question me. The dude got arrested for skipping out on a bill, he was already gonna pay. Idiot. Also not much of a story here but one of the hosts slapped a server in the face. Both women and I have no clue why it happened. They both got sent home. The server caught her outside and hit her really hard in the back of the head with her shoe. I don't know what happened after but one of them may get fired. The third story is, work at the grade above for your current pay or get fired. No worries, here's my notice. Happy New Year, said my offensively cheery boss as he told me last week that starting today, I will be trained and required to work at the above grade for no extra pay. The industry I work in is pretty specialist and deals with a very technical legal area. If we mess up, we pay out. We have different grades of workers, each paid to a level in line with their knowledge of said technical legal stuff. I'm bottom rung of the ladder, barely above minimum wage. There's a big jump between my administrative duties and the next grade's actual decision-making duties. Last week I got told that starting today, I'm getting trained to work the next grade up. Oh right, I said, so do I get paid more? There's no room in the budget for that right now, answers my manager. So I replied to the effect of, I'm not working at grade A for the pay of grade B. At which point I got a long speech about how I'll need to be a team player and think of the needs of the business, and how this will be a great development opportunity for me. I actually incredulously laughed when he said, if you work at the next grade up it means you formally apply for that role in the future, you're a shoe in because you've already been doing it. I answered, just not being paid for it. When I still refused he dropped all pretenses and said, when you took this job, you agreed to be flexible and do whatever role you were assigned to. This is your role now, don't like it, you don't have to work here basically trying to act like Mr. Big D. So that's what I've called his bluff. Put my notice in this morning. Now the management are SHing themselves because we're already massively understaffed at my bottom rung of the ladder, and weirdly nobody wants to work for near minimum wage anymore. I've got three missed calls from him and two more from a senior manager. F them. Hope they go under. Update. After six months found out from a former coworker, they really went bankrupt, huh? <laughs> I hope you love these stories. Subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching and have a good day.